Hello. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. Um, I was talking with Lydia last night at February and June and um, she said something along the lines of that she didn't dare post a, pic a picture of her costume because it was just that messy. And this took us something that I actually feel very strongly about which is that basically we should be trying to avoid Instagram perfection. Um, I mean, we all know those photographs ones that uh, look beautiful. If you're one of those people who creates those photographs, and I include myself in that, then I think you should be, you know, yes, we should do those things because, you know, they do look nice. Um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I can freely admit that. But I think we should be balancing it by showing photos that are also more real um, and more, like, you know, real life so that um, we normalise the real, if you like. Um, because otherwise we, we we get to a position where, I mean you see it in sort of like magazines and fashion and so on, where there is this sort of idealised perfection all the time and it gives people just a really high standard to try and reach up to that is almost unattainable and puts a great deal of um, pressure on people and um, it's not healthy, it's really not healthy. So I think as responsible social media people, if you like, that we need to really, really need to try to uh, normalise the real. So that's what this morning's video is about. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning the camera around in a moment and my study class classroom is exactly as I have literally just walked in here this morning to start my day's work. Um, I have my coffee, you see, coffee right here. Um, I've just woken up, you know, got dressed, put all my stuff on, and uh, and literally I've just walked in here to start my day's filming. So this, as you see it, is what it looks like on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Now, there is one caveat here in that this room is also the room where I do all of my PhD research. So, and it's not very big. So for that reason, it has to be kept tidy to a, a certain extent. I mean, my desk needs to be kept clear and my PhD study stuff needs to be kept organised and needs to be able to find things. But that said, when you see what's behind me, it's messy. It's messy. Anyway, I'm going to turn it around in a moment. I'm going to pause it and turn it around. Maybe have some coffee. I just, uh, just walked in. Just woken up. Uh, mm, coffee, coffee. I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you around my very tiny little classroom and then I will take pictures and I will put them up on social media. I would really, really like it if other people would join in with this. I mean, I know that some of you do have classrooms that are really tidy and really organised and in many cases much bigger in this room. <laughs> Honestly, I look at some of those classrooms and I get really, really envious of you and I think, oh, if only. Um, you know, some of you have the space and the time to be able to uh, actually organise yourselves and uh, get in and get it all neat and tidy and that, that's great, you know, good for you if that's the case. But if you're like me, if you're a messy crafter, um, you, can, you, know, you keep your workspace somewhat organised but the rest of it just has to get piled wherever. Post photos, don't feel ashamed of where you work, how you work, because like I said, we need to normalise this. This is what not everybody does in the crafting world, I think. What, what, I, I really can't explain it any more than that. I, I think it's, um, like I said, we need to get away from this idea of Instagrammable perfection. Um, and uh, that includes classroom. So, um, if we can get posts along, you know, kind of like, you know, hashtag keeping it real um, and uh, share photos of, uh, of your own crafting space, I would be, um, that would be fantastic. And um, I think that would be really something that's really good to do. And would also help encourage other people to, you know, get involved in this. And if nothing else, this is very much a community craft. 
um, at least in the way that I experience it. I mean, I think it's wonderful to be able to craft along and talk to people about what you're doing and uh, to get ideas and inspiration off other people. Um, it's not something that you do in isolation, I think. And even pre-internet, people are going along and doing, you know, crafting groups and uh, crafting together, you know, the whole craft with me thing uh, comes out of that. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's important to, to try and encourage people. And I think normalisation of messy cross spaces is part of that so um anyway i'm gonna shut up now and uh and let you uh let you see my cross space so bear with me one minute hello i'm back again and i'm now standing with my back to the door which tells you something about how big my cross room isn't my study isn't there as you can see is my desk with my coffee on the box right in front of you, right there, is full of all my PhD files. There's a computer there, and a filing cabinet with a massively great printer on top and scanner and what have you. If I scroll down, then you can see that there's a box. And in the sort of stripy bag right about there, there is, um, it's full of um, papers, like tissue paper and what have you, that sort of thing. Some socks for when my feet get cold. Um, my handbag, laptop in the um, bag right there, a cardigan, yeah it's messy, um, all of my um, to-do stuff, if I come out a little bit and you can see this wall, um, I'm trying to keep this fairly steady so that I don't jiggle you too much, this says Groving in the Groves of Academia, basically the library, something that I really liked when I first moved in here. And these pictures are all to do with my PhD research. Uh, we all have a picture. Um, this guy up here, um, I don't know whether you can see that. That's it, I think, Gloucester, Gloucester Cathedral. And he is somebody who used to write a lot of the records that I work with, or similar type of records that I work with. And the records that I work with, um, I'm sure I've found photos of this on Instagram. They are folded lengthwise, the A4 size, a lot of them, and they are folded lengthwise, and then lengthwise again, so you get very long, thin strips. And this photograph actually shows the way that they were stored. They would have been put inside these little cubby holes here. Um, loads of them just kind of stacked in like that going up. So that's why that's there. Um, but if I come back out again and go down and there's a little, uh, ignore the box with the blinking lights, that's just the um, computer stuff. Um, uh, a lot of this stuff is uh, crafting stuff, the, uh, the little folders here have got them um, stamps in. These are all sort of um, cut up books and um, the ends of books that you can keep for, you know, crafting with and so on. Um, this little cubby hole thing came from a friend of mine. She nicked it off her father-in-law. It's, it's amazing how this stuff goes around and as you can see, it's got um, bits of crafting stuff in. There's bees on the top there, you can see. Um, what's in there? Um, yeah, you can see bulldog clips. Um, there's pins there, long pins. I've got uh, little seed bees there, green ones. So, yeah, you know, there's lots of crafting stuff here. Some books that I've started to rip up two here that I won't rip up because they're just too old and too nice and I think too irreplaceable. Right and the window is closed and uh, you will be able to see why because there is a main road right outside my house. It's also just been day, that car there. Um, and uh, this is my desk space which again is very very messy. So there's some um, perennially crafting stuff here, you know, my craft knife, there's those bits of paper. Um, there's a box there, it's got all of the um, distressing sponge dabber thing. Uh, some models there. This is um, my usual perennial um, pencil kit that I use all the time. Um, more pens and brushes and what have you. Uh, notes to myself. Um, over there, there's all kinds of glues and messy bits of paper, my computer glasses. That's my bullet journal right there, which I use to organise myself. Um, 
And then down here there's more crafting stuff. I'm starting to run out of space, I've got to go backwards. Ah. There we go, more crafting space. More crafting stuff. There's the um the thing that I made with um journal Tracy's journal of attached case. Um so there's lots of stuff there. Uh, more crafting stuff in this box here. There is bits of paper. All of these books here are all to do with the thesis. Um, they are library books, so they are kept separately from all the rest of them. If I scroll up, you start to see some of the rest of them. There's a library in here, so yeah. Um, go along, more crafting material there. There's a cupboard behind there, which is absolutely full of crafting stuff. And then let me... um. Push my chair out of the way a moment. This is deafening you, I apologise. And scroll down so you can see the mess right there. So yeah, there's a sewing machine down there. There is a great big pile of books. That pile of books is all for crafting with. Again, it's important that they're kept separately from the um my library books. I can't be I'm ripping up a library book. Um various boxes full of things like templates and stuff. Um some bookboard there, material there, and uh, in there there's loads of uh, rolls of paper. I mean this is the um three hundred and twenty four year old paper. Yep, there you go. Where is it? There's the date the dates on here, they come uh, there you go. 1695 you see you will see this when I do my flip through of the spring and the blues journal but there's loads and loads of wallpaper and things in there including you know some short bits and uh, and so on um, there's boxes of napkins and what have you in there so there's loads of stuff there and then the files behind here which I can't actually get to right there are all full of academic articles which I haven't read yet. It's the life of an academic. You never read everything you want to read. Um, more uh, sort of crafting stuff there. And going up. All of these books I can rip up. Yes, including the Latin dictionary. I've got another copy of that. That's falling apart. Um, so yeah. Um, more crafting stuff. This is all 12 by 12 paper. More crafting stuff there. And more on top there. Well, wow, some of it's crafting stuff. These two boxes here, the green one and the one above it, is full of all uh, my wedding records and paraphernalia, which one day I need to turn into a book of records for myself. Um, and then next to that, here's the door that I was standing against just now. So you get some idea of the space in my office. One thing I do want to show you is this section here. These are books that I've made. They're actually, I'm mean, going to get one down and show you. Um, They're actually not conventional books in the sense of being, you know, junk journaling. But these are all my bullet journaling um, books. I create in my, um, I have um, a traveller's notebook for my journaling right here. Yeah. And uh, every month I create a new insert for it. Um, and I work out of that for that month and this one as you can see is January 2018 and uh, I create a cover for it and then every six months I go through and uh, I, I put, them, put them all into a book that I have a record of them all that was February, this one's March um, and so on, you get the idea there's a lot of uh, consistency between them. So this was one of the first books that I made. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very nice and sturdy. Um, as you can see down there, all the, uh, the signatures. Very, very big signatures, these. But uh, I'm quite proud of how those have turned out. And I'll put that back. But you can see there's a number of them. This is this year's. Um, so January onwards, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with putting all of the entire years into one. So this one isn't actually bound yet. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of um, journaling stuff in here. And this goes back all the way back to 
September 2015, which is that one there. And all of this is journaling stuff, so there's a lot there. So, anyway, I'm going to put pause here again. And I hope you've enjoyed that um, flipping the camera around and having a look at my classroom. Um, I have some more coffee. I'm, I'm a bit talked out. I didn't have my microphone on. I realised halfway through recording that I didn't have my microphone on. So I really hope that the uh, the sound has picked up properly. Um, if not, then I will reshoot it. Obviously, there'll be some differences because by the time I reshoot it, it will have been lived in. So um, you'll notice some differences if I have to reshoot it. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, if you've got any questions about anything that you've seen in this um, flip, not, it's not a flip through, is it? Um, a filming of my classroom. If you've got any uh, questions about anything that you've seen and you want to know, you know what's in that box or you know, what's, um, what this is or, or whatever, um, um, please do feel free to shoot me questions down below or grab me on Instagram or, or whatever um, and I will do my best to uh, answer you. Um, that goes for crafting or my PhD work, I'm happy to talk about either. Um, and um, basically that's it for now. Very short quick video but um, I really really hope that other people follow me in uh, in doing this um, in uh, filming their craft space. The lived craft space, you know, as it is, no tidying, no nothing, just messy warts and all film it photograph it post it i don't care please for me